All right, welcome back to AI News. My name is Ethan. I'll be your host today. And then we have Angela Underwood Jacobs running for a Lieutenant Governor of California. You know, I kind of thinking about my, my mom and my dad um, when we came here to California. I believe I was only, gosh, one, about one years old. And uh, she was getting ready to have my, my brother, uh, Patrick. And they decided to come here to uh, start a life and uh, raise a family. and. Um, get their careers going and all of that. And they followed my grandparents here, uh, who was here, they're here first. And of course, you know, when people think of California, it's like the place of, you know, place of dreams. And, you know, it's just, you know, you kind of like I have all these flashing lights in your mind. And, uh, and they came here uh, from uh, Arkansas, actually. And uh, gosh, my mom uh, growing up in Arkansas when she was a little one, uh, she had four sisters that my, my grandparents had. And uh, she would tell me stories about when she was little, how they would go out and pick cotton. And, oh, okay. uh, and they, would, they would earn like, you know, few pennies a day, a couple of dimes or something like that. And she said that they would all take their money and then they would give it to my grandmother. And so my grandmother would then just save everything. She was always finding a way to save money. And the reason why is that they didn't want to rent anymore. They wanted to build their own home. And so eventually they saved up enough money. My grandmother did. And uh, she decided, they decided to build a home. So my grandfather was the first African-American man to build his own home in this little uh, town in Arkansas. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, and so as I go about my life, you know, I think about them and their struggles and the things that they had to face in order for me to be here and literally to sit here with all of you today. Yeah. Without them, there would be no me. And so as I, I think about their struggle and how they put their literally their lives around the line, oftentimes, right? Specifically, my uh, grandfather, who was a, uh, a World War II veteran, he had received the Bronze Star uh, for courage. Wow. And uh, that was pretty much something that was somewhat unheard of. He also later became a pilot and uh, a world traveler. He had done a lot of things that most of his friends would have never dreamt of doing, but my, my grandfather had this perseverance in him that he would, uh, he would, he will find ways to get through and overcome adversity. And I believe that that spirit is in me. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, I look back on everything that I've done and wanting to make sure that my, that my family, my, my mom and my dad who have since passed, my grandparents that have passed, and then my brother who recently passed in uh, 2020. I hope that I am creating a legacy that we could be proud of and at the same time very much uh, keeping in mind the future generations uh, to come. I, th I think that's very important. I think you got into a, this is the American dream. Yeah. You work hard and you become what you work for. Yes. You want a house, you build a house. You want a land, you buy the land, you work hard and buy the land. And I think that's something that American these days, my generation, the millennial, millennial, uh -huh. can't speak. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> no, yeah, it, it's missing. We want something so fast. We want something this right now. I, I, I uh, over time for two days. Hey, I should be a manager now, right? <laughs> and life doesn't work that way. That's and they true. don't, they don't, they don't really work hard. We, we miss the work ethic of yes. it. Yeah. And a lot of time, um, especially, uh, I'm. I'm no, no pun intended, but a lot of time African American uh, neighborhood, mm -hmm. a lot of them they just want fast cash. Mm -hmm. I remember I watched this uh, Dave Chappelle thing. They go like, "Hey, uh, brothers and sister, if you want to be rich, you want to do something, you know what? Got to play ball or learn, learn how to rap or something. There's no way you can get out of this slump. There's no mm -hmm. way you can get out on the street and." That mentality is completely wrong. What do you think about that? Here's the first thought is that, okay, well, we all know that Dave Chappelle is a comic. He's a comedian. Yeah. So he's going to be, he's, he's going to be, be extreme. Too. He's going to, yes, he's going to be offensive. He's going to be extreme. I'm just saying, but yet he is funny. So I, I will say that. However, you know, um, yeah, there, there are, there are 
places uh, in, in California, across the country, around the world that get into that, that slump, that mentality with, without a doubt. The victim mentality. Right. But at the same time, I, I think that there are, there are also a lot of people within those same areas Mm-hmm. that don't have that victim mentality and we need to we need to concentrate on all of them right that's the first thing mm-hmm. but i think we need to specifically the people that want to do something with their lives and they know that their la- their lives are important that they're here for a reason a purpose yeah we need to make sure that we give people options which comes back to employment and education mm-hmm. there's also another aspect of that too home yeah and what i mean by that are having parents that truly care and love their children and they work every day to make sure that they are doing right by their children. And when you do right by your children, you inherently also do right by your communities which then goes up to the uh, the cities and the states and so on, right? Yeah. It's really all, we're all connected in that way. So home life is extremely important that you have, um, When you come home after school, that the first thing we used to do was change your clothes, <laughs> get out of your school clothes and change it so you get us running around clothes. We would be told, the first question was, hey, did you, uh, you have homework? That was, my mom asked that question every day. And if she wasn't there to ask it, my dad asked that question. <laughs> so th- those types of things, structure. Yeah. We, children need structure. Yes. And a lot of times they don't have structure. And why? Because a lot of mom, a lot of moms are single parents. We got single dads nowadays too. We just do. But we got to, we got to figure out a way that we could get the parents with employment where you can actually raise a family, where you can actually, uh, a mortgage, that you can actually pay a mortgage, not rent, mm-hmm. a mortgage. Yes. And we don't have enough of those, uh, we don't have enough of that happening. Now we do, we look at unemployment. I mean, they're saying that unemployment is actually going to get worse in 2023 than it is in 2022. I've read that. So that means then that family, education, and viable employment become even more crucial going into the years ahead. A lot of the issues that we that I see here in uh, California and across the United States is is, is multi layered, yeah. multi layered issues. But my my parents were uh, my parents were very humble uh, people, very similar to my grandparents. And uh, my mother actually worked at Kmart for thirty years. She retired from Kmart. Wow. And uh, but it, the funny part about my mom though is that. Even though she worked at Kmart, you would have thought when she walked into that to that store that she was going to a corporate office in San Francisco or something. Honestly, mm. that is just that was just the way that she was made up. But she loved people. She loved the fact that it was close to home, and she and she just loved having conversations and, and all of that. It's the work ethic. It was the work ethic, and and never missing a day. You know that that type of mentality. My father uh, was a janitor. He was a janitor at UC Berkeley. So you can imagine, he's a janitor and he's seeing these children, these young adults come in, getting a, a grade A education. And here he is cleaning the bathrooms of the stalls and all these things, right? Yeah. But he never missed work. He was there every day. No matter how he felt, he got up and he went to work. And why did my parents do things that way? Because it was their name. Yeah. Their name was important that when people thought of them, that people looked at them, that they could look at them and see that they were a stand up person in the community. Yeah. And we're missing some of that right now. But and I believe that it can be restored, but we have to change our mentality of not of being a, not being a person that needs immediate gratification. Because anything that you get quickly, it most of the time it's not important. Later on in life, you'll look back on it and say, "Huh, I got that, but did it really add value back to myself?" Yeah. And a lot of times, the answer would be no. So, working hard and knowing that your name matters and the way that you show up in your life, it matters. And not being a spectator in your own life. 
yeah. taking action, you know, as opposed to sitting there as you're at a tennis match and you're looking from here to here, right? <laughs> but you're sitting, you're not moving, you're not doing anything. In order to do well in life, you have to do something. You have to have a plan. Mm -hmm. And you have to be willing to take the risk to put that plan in motion. Yeah. And I think that is what we're missing right now. Yeah. Young people these days, they want success so fast and they want comfort so fast. They want their life become easier so fast. They want to enjoy sex, but they don't want to have the consequences. California just passed AB 2223. You can actually kill baby after it is born. Leave a, a baby alive there to lay on a cold steel tray to die. And that's something that's really uh, hurt my mind. What's your stance on the abortion? Oh As you even say it, you probably see my eyes are watering right now. It breaks my heart. I am pro-life. I see sex from a very conservative place. I believe that any time someone is having multiple partners, that they are giving a piece of themselves away. Yes. And if you continue to give yourself away, you'll have nothing left for you. And then that's where the issues come in. I am pro-life. And what you just described is, uh, I don't know, it's, it's heartbreaking to me because as much as I say that for myself that I feel as though I am a, um, I am a voice for the unheard, I think about the baby. And that baby has a voice too. Yes. And who's speaking on that baby's behalf? And I think that when you talk about immediate gratification and those things, uh, again, I think those, some of those things are taught and also heavily influenced by uh, social media mm -hmm. with people that have become successful already and then they go out and they put all of this information out in the world, but yet they're not responsible for the information that they put out in the world. It goes back to the person that hears it and then decides to act upon it. And I think that's when parenting is most important when you have one set of values that you're teaching within your four walls of your home, yeah. and then your child is reaching out and hearing other things, it's even more important to have that type of a relationship where your child could come to you with anything, uh, any thoughts or any preconceived thoughts that they have that have been brought to them by others. It's a tough situation all around, but I think that with parental involvement, grandparent involvement, I know we could do much, much better. And when a woman specifically, I would even say a man for that matter, or a child, young woman or man, go out and uh, give themselves to the world, so to speak, they suffer eventually. Because what happens is that the, the self-esteem breaks down, mm -hmm. the confidence breaks down. And in order to be a productive person in the community, those are the things that you need the most. Yes. So that you can be steered in the right direction, so that you can feel good about yourself because you've done the right thing. I think the world is pushing young women into that direction. For example, like if you go to an abortion clinic, there's actually multiple choices you can do. You can have the baby get adopted. There's a list of parents that's waiting to adopt babies. You can have this baby delivered to a church. There's so many choices, but the clinic will not tell the young woman anything. The clinic will just tell you, hey, you gotta kill this baby. You gotta kill it. You, you gotta do it. It's your choice. You gotta do it. And that's something scary that our state, our governor, our uh, house speaker is actually saying, that's your freedom. It's actually a good thing to kill your own child. I think that is such an evil act and that is such an inhumane act for our government to do something like that. God gave us all a purpose and by a mother killing a baby, she just ruined a purpose, uh, a purpose from God, basically. Mm -hmm. Possibility yeah. of what the child did. Uh baby could have become. I want to get into this. How did you become uh, as a position today? And then uh, how's your spiritual life and everything? I just so happened I was in a, uh, I was at an event in uh, Lake Arrowhead. I think it was last week. And uh, I remember being up on the stage and I said to them that me being here is heaven sent. Okay. And I truly, truly believe that with all of my being, I do. 
The reason I say that is that as a child, I remember my mom, for instance, she taught me how to read from the time that I could begin to talk. <laughs> she taught me how to read. I think I was three years old, and I remember back in the day, I used to have these encyclopedias. I think they're like from A to Z and about that big, and it was sitting on my... You read encyclopedia? Like, well, no, well, you know, you know what's weird? <laughs> she didn't make me read them. I wanted to read them, oh, honestly. Wow. And so from age three, she taught me how to read, but she did that because... She said that she wanted people to look at her daughter as being smart. And so that is why she taught me how to read so early. And because of my mom, I began to just love books. And I remember just sitting somewhere and just reading. My mom would say, you want to go outside and play? I'm like, no, 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 I'm good. And that made me happy. And I think part of it was when you're reading and there's something you, you can dream. You, you dream of what's possible. And I'm sitting here today because of that reason. I live in the realm of what is possible mm -hmm. with life, in my personal life and my professional life. My team will tell you that too, so, along with my kids and my husband. And anyone that knows me will probably say that about me. So I've always felt that there was something that God has intended for me, mm. even though I have no idea what it is. And I feel that I am supposed to do something great. Yeah. And so. One day I was sitting down with my husband, we were getting ready to have dinner, and it was on, actually it was March 8th of 2022. My husband and I were having dinner and my phone rang, and uh, he says, oh, are you gonna pick up the phone? I go, no, 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 we're, we're about to eat dinner. No, I'm, I'm always busy, I wanna eat dinner with you uninterrupted. And so he says, okay. And so maybe a minute or so later, the phone rings again. And he looks at this time, he goes, hey, you know, you sure you don't want to pick up the phone? This person's called you twice now. I said, nope, nope. I am going to call You're him back. You're an amazing wife. I'm eating dinner with you. <laughs> <laughs> I like to think so. <laughs> anyhow, <laughs> anyhow. So it rang again the third time. And, and so I said, okay, I will call them. I'll call them back. And so I said, so I took, so I didn't call them back, actually. I, I sent a text message. Hi, hi, Brian. I saw you called. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, what, what, what can I do for you? And so he saw that I, t I had texted him. So immediately he picks up the phone and he calls. He, he, and I said, oh, hi, how are you? <laughs> and so he says, uh, Angela, uh, he, we talk about how, how I've been and what's been going on politically and all of that. And we talk a little bit. He says, you know, we have an opportunity and we want to know if you would be interested. And I said, okay. He says, we're wondering if you would like to run for lieutenant governor. I was like, what? Are you kidding me? And I started to laugh, actually. I really did this. And I, I because at the time, I didn't necessarily see myself getting uh, back involved in politics so deeply because I was, all, I was handling everything that was going on with my brother's murder. And I wanted to make sure I was giving that situation my full attention, along with everything else that I do in life. And uh, I said, you know, I'm not sure. Let, I, I, let me think about this for a second. So I hang up and I tell my husband, he, he says, really? And I said, <laughs> I said, yeah. And I said, I don't know. I don't know what I think. I don't know what I feel. So the next day, uh, our kids, our, the kids are at home and, uh, and I talked to the kids about it. And they're like, that's when they said, mom, you, you've got to do this. We've got to get someone in offices honest and transparent that is there truly for the people of the state you got to do it and then they said well how many people mom do you even know that have ever even ran for lieutenant governor i was like oh my gosh i have met arnold schwarzenegger before but i think he was governor so you know what that's true <laughs> i'm not sure <laughs> eventually I, I tell them yes and so when i did i had to go the on the 10th to file and the deadline was march 11th so I told them I would, I would run on the 9th, and then on oh, the wow. 10th, I got up like 3.30 3 in the morning to drive down to pull papers. Oh, and God. I'm sitting there, and I remember I couldn't sleep the whole night because uh. it felt very, very surreal. It kind of like, did this really just happen? One of those kind of moments. And so I said, okay, God, I, I'm, I, I'm, always try I'm always listening, and I'm trying to follow. I'm following your word show me something, show me something. So that morning when I got up, it's 3.30, I'm sitting at my makeup, my makeup table, and I look over to the, to the right, and there was a card, a three by five card that was sitting there, and I pick it up, and I look, oh my gosh, I remember when I wrote this. 
and I wrote on the top, ask, believe, receive. Mm -hmm. And then on the next line, I wrote, I, Angela, am governor of California. Oh, okay. And I remember thinking, governor of California, where did that, where did you get that from? Where, what, what is that, Angela? I'm thinking, this is in my mind, right? I'm thinking, talking to myself. And I go, I'm gonna erase it. So I pick up my pencil, and I start to, I get ready to erase it, and then something says to me, don't do it. Don't change it. The rest of the card said, I am happy, I am prosperous, I am healthy, I am loving, I am happy. I wrote that going downward on the card. So when I was about to erase the I am governor of California, I, I said, okay, I'm not going to erase it. And I put a date on it. The date was September 7th, 2016. Oh, wow. September 7th, 2016 is the date that I wrote it. And I had set it on my mirror. And I happened to, when I, before the night, before I'm asking to show me, show me. That was I'm before sure. Trump was president. And <laughs> yes, yes, it was September 7th, 2016. In fact, I have, a, I, I'll have to show you. Yeah. I have yeah. a copy get, of the get, card. Get, get a picture so we can put it right here. <laughs> absolutely. I, absolutely, I will do that. But yeah, so when you, when you asked me about my, uh, my connection uh, to God and my uh, spirituality, I, I am uh, very devoted. I know that I would not be here had it not been for him. I would not be in this position had it not been for him because I believe that we all, he will whisper to us, but we have to pay attention. Yes. And to guide us and to follow his word. What I've done in the day and, I, and, my, and my children were to see me or my parents were to see me, would I feel okay with what they've seen? Mm. And if I could say yes, and I could sleep well at night, then I'm, I'm doing okay. So I am here because this is heaven sent. And I believe that with every portion of my soul and being. Great story. Yeah, I think uh, the whole idea of Christianity is very important in this country. This country is built on Christianity, and that's why it becomes so prosperous. All wisdom must begin with the fear of the Lord. Mm -hmm. The only way, way we can be successful and the only way we can understand how the world works is by fearing the Lord. Mm -hmm. And then you will have wisdom and then you will become smart and then you can have the abilities to do things that you think you can never do and you can become someone you can never become. Yeah. Like, the governor or uh, lieutenant governor. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. yes, yeah. yes, absolutely. So I think God is always telling us something, some these kind of little things yes. to Im not just improve our, our, our life, but improve ourself right. and make us become the light and salt for the whole uh, other people to see. So mm -hmm. become a representative for them. I think this is an amazing story. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Well, uh, is there something you want to tell the voters to do? <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to ask uh, that we everyone come out to vote. We need to vote Republican. We do, and the reason why is because of those core values that you have grown up with and you want your the same for your children. The same things with education and uh, employment, uh, being able to pay your own mortgage, all of those things. We need to make sure that we vote. Some of the numbers that I've looked at, the stats, don't show that we've actually, we, we're eligible, we're ready, but we don't actually go and follow through. We need to make sure that we talk to every single person that we care about, that we know, that we love, and say, we need to vote because it matters. Your voice needs to be heard. So please do that for all of us because we're all connected and we're depending upon one another to take back California and live the California dream because it's possible. All right. Uh
amazing interview. Do you like it? <laughs> oh, no, this is fantastic. No, you, you've been so um, hospitable and so pleasant. And no, this has been wonderful. Thank oh, you so thank very you much. Thank you for coming. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, for her, go out and walk around and uh, get your steps on and then uh, make her name. Let everyone know about her name. Okay. And this, this one, you don't need to know about what district you're in. You're all in the district in California. <laughs> okay? Absolutely. So go outside and then uh, Angela Underwood Jacobs. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Thank now, you. My see pleasure. See you next time. Bye.